Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. As most of you know, we're doing some work to this guitar and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to crown and polish your frets. Now, if you didn't see the last one, we did the fret leveling in the last one and we did in that video a comparison between fret leveling files and fret leveling beams. It's the first step in the process, so you need to know how to do it if you're doing this kind of stuff and also yeah, I think it was a pretty good comparison. So don't forget to check that out. In this video, we're going to be doing the crowning and polishing work. I'm going to get this out of the way before I start doing the work so I don't have to keep saying it. Uh, pretty much everything that I use in this video is going to be available in the links in the description, either from Skyscraper Guitars, if it's one of these orange things, check them out. Awesome guy, small company, great product. Uh, not an affiliate link or anything, just check them out. And then some of the stuff is available through the Amazon link and the vast majority of it is available through the Solo Music Gear link. Uh, those are affiliate links, so if you don't wanna help me out by using them, that's fine. Go through a different link, it doesn't cost you anything extra if you do use them, uh, but it doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to go ahead and round off the ends of the frets so that you don't cut your hands when you're doing them or when you're playing. Then we're gonna crown the frets polish them up and we should be good to go. Let's get you in closer here so you can see what I'm doing. Now one of the key things that affects how comfortable a guitar is to play is of course the fretboard and in particular the ends of the frets and the edge of the fretboard. One of the reasons why vintage guitars, guitars that have been played a lot and everything and are road worn, have what some people perceive to be a more comfortable feel is they've got a round over on the edge from all the wear and tear of playing them and releveling them and all of that. We can put that on ourselves, it's really not difficult at all. And you can do it with a piece of sandpaper, or in particular, I've got a small fret leveling file here. I have a bigger one as well, but I like to use the small one for this particular piece of work because I have more control over it. And you just go in and kind of change the angle a couple times and gently round over the, and carefully round over the ends of the frets. And then I go back in with a finer piece of sandpaper. That was 180 grit, this is 400. These came with my fret leveling beams here. Ooh, careful. And it's fine if you sand the edge of the fretboard a little bit, it is wood, right? So you can sand it with sandpaper, make sure that you don't have any sharp fret ends sticking out and that the edge is rounded over a bit. I'm gonna do the same to the other side now. When you start sanding, you won't have any abrasion happening to the fretboard if you've got some fret sticking out, whereas up here, I've got a little bit more abrasion to the fretboard because I didn't have any tangs or anything sticking out. So I want to go down until I'm at least sanding a bit of wood because that means I'm past any sharp metal that's sticking out. I really shouldn't be doing this at this angle. This is just the things I do for video. Okay, and then to the higher grid again. This is going to be very comfortable to play once I'm done. There. Just make sure you're only getting the end like that. Uh, if you start sanding onto the frets, of course you're going to mess with the leveling. So that's the preliminary step fret ends kind of dealt with. Now next up, I've got these tools also from Solo Music Gear. I've got that edge rounded now, but there's still the sharp edge on either side of the fret. So that's where these guys come in. They, these are, <laughs> these things are awesome. I need to make sure I'm using the right one. Yeah, here we go. These have abrasive files on either side of them. They've got a crowning type of thing here, a hollow ground file in the middle, and then the back is perfectly smooth. So I can take this and round over those ends this is a good place to be using tape on your fretboard, by the way, unless you're very experienced with this. Round over those ends from either side using the sides of them. And then I can take the hollow ground part and just carefully round off that edge from the top. And yes, you have to do this on every fret and it's a long and tedious process, but it's worth it. And it's what makes the guitar comfortable when all is said and done. Now I can't imagine you guys wanting to watch me do this like 42 times, or at least not at regular speed. So let's blast through this and we'll move on.
So our next step here is going to be crowning. We've leveled the frets, so they're all kind of flat on top, and they're flat with each other, which is important, but they've also got a flat spot on the top from the leveling. We need it to be crowned. We need it to be rounded so that there's a peak at the top where the string can hit, make proper contact, and intonate. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a fret crowning file. That's probably the fastest and easiest way to do it. You can crown by hand with a, well, it's all by hand. You can crown with a three corner file and just round up like that. You can use a do it yourself kind of fret crowning tool. I, should, I did a video on how to make this. It's a cheap, easy, effective method, but really your fastest option is going to be a decent fret crowning file. This is a relatively inexpensive one that works quite well. It's from Solo Music Gear. Um, you can also get like a Z file from Stumac. Those work awesome, I'm told. I don't know personally because I can't afford them. So that's what we're going to use. But first, we need to mark our frets carefully so that we don't get Sharpie all over our fretboard. Again, you can tape off your fretboard to protect it, um, but I don't like to waste a bunch of tape. And I've done this a few times, so I'm not going to. Don't draw on your fretboard. This is a mistake that I've made a few times, even including on video. <laughs> and it's not ideal, so be careful. Don't draw on your fretboard. The reason we're doing this is when we crown this, we want there to be a nice little peak at the top that ideally, oh, see, that was really close, that ideally still has just a touch of Sharpie on it. And then we know that we haven't removed any off the peak. We don't want to remove any material off the peak because we've already leveled our frets and we want them to stay level with each other. So we need the peaks to stay intact because that's where they're all level. We've got the peaks marked now. We'll give that a second to dry. And then I go over it with the appropriate fret leveling file. And again, the idea is those peaks stay intact and we end up with just a tiny blue line of Sharpie. As always, you need to respect the fact that there's a radius here. So you do have to put a little curve on this when you're doing it and pay attention to what you're doing. It's a very thin bit of Sharpie still on the fret when we're done. That is the idea. Make sure you're using the right, <laughs> the right file. This particular fret leveling, or fret crowning file rather, has three different ver uh, pieces on it, three different channels, and they're all different sizes. So one of them won't fit on your fret properly. The other one will work fine. And then the third one is, I think for bass guitars, it's a lot wider and it will flatten out your fret a little too much. As you can tell, this is a pretty straightforward process. So I'm going to go ahead and continue, crown all of my frets, and then we'll come back for the next step. Now that we've got these all rounded, crowned, comfortable and everything, it's time to get to the polishing portion. The smoother and shinier these are, the better your instrument will play. We want to make sure we're protecting our fretboard, so we've got shields here. You don't necessarily need shields, you can operate with just tape if you want. And in fact, a very popular trick is to go ahead and take your tape and use it. Sorry, pardon me here, getting my knife. Woo, careful. Use, use your tape to kind of augment your shield um, by simply wrapping some over the edge of it. And people do like to do that and kind of fold the tape over like that so that you get a larger protected area and you don't have to worry about this thing messing with your fretboard. So I'm gonna do that real quick here just to kind of show you what, what we're getting at. And once you've done this, it should last for a while, so take our tape and there we have it. We've now got our shield ready to go and tape to protect the other frets with it. So this is kind of an easy way to go about it. You can also just take a piece of tape and tape off one fret at a time and move this stuff, this platinum tape, check out Amazon if you want it, 
This platinum tape uh, is nice for that. It can be restuck several times and it's kind of rubbery, so it offers good protection. So you can do that and then use the shield on top. You can do just that or you can do just this. What I'm gonna do here is work my way down fret by fret. I'm carefully gonna, I'm gonna add some tape to this one first, but I'm gonna go fret by fret and I'm gonna use my fret erasers. Those are my preference, my favorite way of doing this. There are other ways you can do it with sandpaper. Uh, I do not recommend using steel wool, okay? A lot of people say, do it with steel wool. I do not <laughs> recommend that. Uh, for several reasons. One, it's metal, it creates shavings. You're playing an instrument with magnets in it. Think about that, probably not a great idea. Two, metal shavings. They get in the edges under your fret uh, frets. They make a mess. They just, just don't use steel wool. I don't know why people do that. You can use fret erasers, sandpaper, or another popular option is those little micro mesh pads from 3M. Those work really well as well. But my favorite option, these fret erasers, so that's what I'm gonna use. These are the Hosco fret erasers from Solo Music Gear. Got my two different sizes of guards because this one doesn't fit between the frets down here. I'm gonna start at the top and I'm going to start with my 150 grit fret eraser. Then I'm just gonna go over this a few times to clean it off and polish it up. Now, I'm not doing a ton here. I'm only sanding a little bit because I'm gonna go in afterward with my other fret erasers that are a finer grit and continue. And honestly, once you're done that, you're, you're pr pretty much all set. You're basically good to play. But like I said, the shinier and smoother these are, the better off you're gonna be, the better your instrument's gonna play. So we're gonna take it a step further, a step much further and polish the absolute heck out of these things. And there are a couple good ways to do that, but I'm gonna show you my favorite. Something that I developed, uh, well actually, I watched Dan from Guns and Guitars do it, essentially, and then I just kind of took it one step further for my own purposes. But we'll cover that in a second. See how fast this goes? I'm, I mean, I'm <laughs> telling you all my plans here while I do this, and I'm almost all the way through this first round. And then, uh, yeah, we'll fast forward through the next bet, a bit rather, which is just gonna be me doing the same thing over again with the other grits. So I figured I would have to fast forward sooner than this, but it turns out I have an almost unlimited ability to ramble on for a ridiculous amount of time, something that many people have complained about. But this time I'm doing something at the same time, so there's no reason to complain about too much talk and not enough action. All right, I'm gonna go over this again with the other ones and then we're gonna come back and I'll show you how I like to polish these. Okay, so as you can see, those are looking pretty good now. They're nice and smooth, probably play pretty well, but we can do better. One of the ways that I like to do this is with auto saw and a cloth. You just go in, put this polish on the cloth and buff real hard until it turns black. And when it turns black, you know, well, it's polished essentially. Uh, you can keep going for a while, but that's the metal shavings that turn it black. The polish actually takes off just the most minute amount of metal and really brings it up to a nice shine. So that's one way of doing it. Not the best necessarily, maybe the best, I don't know. It's all a matter of preference. But we're gonna do something a little different this time. So I've got my Dremel here with the flex on. I've got two little felt wheels. I need two because I've got two different compounds and I'm using one wheel for each compound. You always only use one wheel per compound. Try not to mix them up. Um, 
Now, I mentioned earlier that I got this idea from Dan at Guns and Guitars. I believe he uses the brown, the cleaning compound. Gets the job done, gets it up to a nice gleam. The way he does it is awesome. And yeah, you just need one wheel if you're going to just use one compound. In an effort to try and be better, even though I'm not, uh, I also use the white, which is the number five polishing compound. The brown's a three. There are a bunch of different grades. This is a finer one. So you go in with the brown first, and then you finish it up with this to make it really shiny, because the shinier my frets are, the more it distracts people from how much I can't play. So very straightforward to use. You can use your shields if you want, but this, because your fingers have to be very close to your shields to operate them, this is a good time to simply take a couple pieces of tape and work your way down the fretboard. So I'm going to grab a couple pieces of tape. Again, this is a nice tape because you can unstick and restick it a few times and it tends to continue working just fine. Put them, make sure they're more than the width of the fretboard and put them right up against the fret. We only really need to polish the top of the fret, but this Dremel tool will kind of reach around it a little bit. Open up your polish, your compound, I guess, is what we're using first. And fire up your Dremel. Take a little bit of the polish. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses. And go ahead and polish. All right, guys, so that covers the fret crowning and polishing process. I am, well, stoked about that. That looks awesome. See if we can get you a better look here, even though I probably already tried in B-roll. See? Uh, yeah, there we go. Nice and shiny. Yeah, should be good. All right, guys, so that is it for this one, but don't forget to tune in for the next one because we are nowhere near done with this guitar and next time we are going to install this badass backlit LED kill switch. It's going to be awesome. You take a look, check that out. The beautiful gold that's going to work perfectly with the other hardware on that guitar. It's got an awesome LED light around it. Yeah, can't wait to get this in. This is from Iron Age, Iron Age Music. They make some really cool products including a whole bunch of these different kill switches uh, and some awesome picks too. I've got a bunch of really cool picks from them now, um, which I'm going to use to demo this thing. So stick around in the next video. We are going to get this guy installed and it is going to be fantastic. So as always guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time. Have a good one.